the network. This is a point made by Mark Mulligan. He made the point about the tech majors becoming powerhouses. He also mentions that about we're currently experiencing a discovery crisis in that we're listening to way more music now, but at the same time, we're not really discovering as much. We're not really developing meaningful relationships with artists. Mm. We're sort of just streaming as a commodity just for, you know, just for a certain purpose rather than actually discovering new artists to love. And it could become a growing problem as the streaming culture increases. Now, what do you think? Do you think that's more of a feeling? You know, how just generally, generationally some things change and they're not used to it and they say, oh, this isn't what it used to be. Or do you think there's some accuracy, accuracy to that? I think from, even though we look at it on the face of it, there's definitely, you know, there are stats to support this. But at the same time, I think we're shifting more towards the dark social now, which we'll talk about, you know, owning your own, owning your own fans and that. Therefore, I feel like people will switch away from this and become more community focused. And I still, I, I love like the Discover Weekly and Release Radar on Spotify, but at the same time, I'm not just, I'm not just in there just to save certain songs. I'm also then deep diving into the artist catalog as well. A lot of people aren't doing that. But I feel like we're going to lean more, we're going to go more towards like back to artist discovery rather than just listening to music. Just, right. Yeah. So let's walk through this. So essentially they're kind of blaming playlisting culture yeah exactly. right yeah and playlisting culture and radio culture. which starts the ipod basically mm. goes way back to the ipod i'd argue yeah yeah so if i'm saying and because i'm listening to so much music through playlists because i just want to i go to a mood or something similar yeah. to this yeah. artist and i'm not just listening to this artist at this time and this artist at this time i'm i'm now hearing all these songs and i get to know them maybe from frequency i never might even know the artist that's actually singing the song, mm-hmm. yeah. right? In some way, though, I said, eh, all right, that's how it was with radio. I guess the biggest difference is the fact that at some point people were being upsold to choosing an artist, right? Which record do you want to go hear on demand? Yes, you can do that now, even easier, less of a barrier to entry because there's no no CDs that you have to go buy. You can just actually go to that artist. But I guess maybe it's almost so accessible that people don't use it now. I, you know, like I, maybe the incentive isn't there. Is, well, is that what's way, driving it? Is that what he's saying? I don't understand. I think at this point that on that side, you know, we have got all these playlists and it is very easy to listen to music and listen to artists and not really think about them or, you know, just listen to whatever comes on. But at the same time, because of social media and things like Bandcamp, you know, you can be a lot closer to actually than they helped you before. Therefore, in that way, you are really building meaningful relationships with artists. Well, I guess where I lean to is the idea that it's probably some sense of an exaggeration just because the landscape has changed. And what I mean by that is you can really look at the whole concept of an, a long tail, right? At one point, attention was concentrated on a small segment of the market because attention couldn't even be accessed for a lot of the niches out there or niches however you say that word right like that just wasn't possible internet happens bam eventually people can now consume a lot of these smaller communities and types of music genres and all that stuff more people can access them and those genres can access more people so what happens is that attention that was monopolized in on the short side of the of the long tail all of a sudden has to be shared and when that happens especially when you include social media it's not that there are no closer relationships i feel like i feel like they're just less stars on steroids where we have these people that were up here and now it's increased a middle class there used to be a huge attention gap right? The inequality attention gap. Now that gap is shrunk, right? You have more people from the bottom that is, have risen to the middle, but you have some of those people who are at the bottom of the top that have, have came down a little bit. You have the super superstars that are still there, but now there's a lot of people that I believe in the 90s, the 80s, right? That were looked at on a certain level that yeah. would not have been perceived on that level, right? Today, because not because of a talent. I'm not even just saying that because a lot of times people think 
that oh, there's less talent. No, there's no way there's less talent. It's more today, competition now, right? It's That's, more competition, yeah. and we have more access to bad talent. Yeah, there's exactly. less curation, yeah. right? So I think some of that has to do with the fan relationship as well. It's like yes, we do have our deep connection still with certain people, but then there's also more. Uh, bad quality connections. You, yeah, you they'll, they'll, they'll always be super fans, but they'll just be a, a more constrained amount for different artists. But whereas, exactly. like, whereas, like, yeah, exactly. Yep. So that's where I, that's where I see it going. I don't think it is necessarily a crisis. I think it's just it is now part of the culture, but there will still always be, you know, the, a place for the you know the the tight knit community to build relationships with the artists. Like, cause we've it's got a crisis for place. those who are invested in the old model, but philosophically you can argue like <laughs> you can argue for the new way right if you want to think of a more uh, let's say socialism or just what do you call it merit of of talent that like that type of philosophy and about the people and the people being controlled that, that's mm -hmm. more today if you're thinking about capitalism right and control then and in your specific purist critique of what quality is, then that might lend towards the old model. And that brings us on to his other point about fandom becoming the new currency. Mm. And this is now this is the you know, this is the power of technology now that we have got to this point where you can directly reach out and support your artists. If I like this particular artist, you know, not only do I not only just go to their gig or buy their merch, I can now, at least in Eastern culture and Eastern music, I can actually, you know, tip artists play out a certain track or just you know to support them just you know give them a bit of money if i want to directly right. and this is what he now believes we're now steering to us in the west over the course of the next decade and we're starting to see that being implemented with um, platforms like loom we mentioned last time they've launched a new virtual currency called notes where you can directly tip artists that you like on the platform and we are seeing twitter are now starting to experiment with it as well they might be implementing it into the platform this year, which is, you know, the biggest change that's happened to Twitter in a long time, really. And YouTube has already did that as well. Yeah, yeah. Twitch has chats. been doing yeah. that for a long time. I think, man, that's just a matter of time. It's inevitable. I never really understood why they hadn't done that before because it seems just, and you know, from my perspective, it's a great ability to access another form of profit for a company because so many times our, for our technology platforms let's look at social media because this is where a large part of it comes from all right social media will you know it grew it expanded and then so many of these platforms look to hit a certain threshold of having market share and now we're going to monetize through advertising and then mm -hmm. in a lot of ways for some people a lot of people that ruins the user experience blah 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 at least that's what they say the other model and, and a lot of these companies by the way still are not profitable although you have this advertising yeah. and you're making hundreds of millions but at the same time you're still not profitable due to all expenses and the other model is like yo we're just starting out and we have this ingrained way of making money that the the community actually likes because we're taking a share of the tipping spotify not spotify TikTok. i believe they take 50 percent. i'm not aware how I much do, yeah. yeah yeah i'm not aware how much everybody takes but that's profit have it as opposed to having to wait the fact that you have revenue that's already starting before you even think about advertisers and obviously TikTok is very smart in how they're integrating advertisers but even getting into traditional programmatic advertising and things like that just the ability to have your own revenue stream it only makes sense that um, without having to wait for those other things and and even the stickers, right? They've been doing that in, like you said, Eastern yeah. culture for so yeah. long. Even I remember when I first realized that, because I could even, when Facebook tried that years ago, because then that's probably part of it. They haven't trained people in America, at least, their behavior to do stuff like that. Because to me, I'm like, why yeah. would somebody buy a, a sticker? Like, what, 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 do, what do they get from the sticker? I still don't understand that completely yeah. more yeah. than I used to. But when it first started, that's probably had to be like, I feel like I might've been in high school, maybe in college but I just remember that feature and I didn't understand 
what was the point? Even when it's free, like I didn't, I don't understand poke. I never understood like why, why do I want to poke somebody? I don't, I don't understand that stuff. But there's a culture that does those things fanatically, and then the, and then the fact that there's money behind it, is, it just seems like it's the only way to go. If, if not only for the fact that platforms like TikTok are coming over and these other platforms, which help train U.S. users to do so. But if you don't, there the competitive advantage of that act, act of additional stream of income alone becomes a threat to your company being able to to even you know withstand these other companies. Yeah. It's the network.